I'm in a relationship right now. I, I think it's the last one I'll ever be in because I'm too tired to start over. Um, and, and, I, and I love her more than anything, but really too tired to start over. I don't know, first dates are a nightmare because you're trying to figure someone else out and nobody will just like reveal their entire selves on a first date. Like you're getting a very watered down version. Like that's why I would always pay extra attention on first dates whenever they would give an opinion on anything. Cause you know that the first date opinion is only about 10% of the actual opinion. Like if on the first date somebody says, they sometimes like to watch a little anime, that means they fucking love anime. If you get laid that night, it will be in a room with Dragon Ball Z wallpaper. If on the first date somebody says they're open to the idea of one day having a kid, their son Tyson is waiting in the minivan. <laughs> if you're on a very first date with somebody and they casually mention that they think Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger is a little underrated, look closer. You're on a date with Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> Google him and get out of there. Um, I recently moved in with my girlfriend. Or, oh, actually, I need to be more specific. I moved in with my girlfriend, who was already living with her sister. So now it's just me and the two of them. And something I've discovered pretty immediately that they love to do, they do it all the time. You might even say it's their favorite thing. They love to joke about killing all men. <laughs> oh, they love it. And, and I love it too. Um, <laughs> But they really love it. I, I mentioned that to a buddy of mine, though, and he goes, oh, well, you know what you should do? When they joke about killing men, you should just joke about killing women. It's like, I'm pretty sure that is not how that works. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, but when women joke about killing men, it sounds like a joke. <laughs> when men joke about killing women, it sounds like a plan. <laughs> like, girls will joke around like, haha, what if we just, like, got rid of guys. But then guys will joke around like, haha, what if we just like got rid of Susan in apartment 21B? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I should probably address this. Uh, some people, I'm sure nobody in this room, but some people are very surprised when I say girlfriend. And it got to the point where when my girlfriend and I first started dating, she posted a video of the two of us to her Instagram. And immediately, a ton of replies came in that were like, that guy is clearly gay. And then a bunch of people replied to those replies saying, hey, don't say that. He could be bi. And nobody dared to even suggest a third possibility. <laughs> I see, I, I am glad that I don't live with guys anymore because uh, I was always too tempted to fuck them. Where did that come from? Who, Jesus. Um, I am glad that I don't live with guys anymore because like every guy roommate I had had at least one gross habit that I still can't even like wrap my head around. Like my college roommate, I lived with this guy for three of the four years. What he would do every time before he went out to a bar or a party, is he would take a tampon and he would dip it in red wine and then he would stick it up his own ass. Good night, everybody. Get home safe. Uh, he would stick a wine-soaked tampon up his own ass. And when I asked him, you know, hey, man, why are you doing that? He said these exact words with this exact level of confidence. He goes, dude. I Googled it. It gets you like 15% more drunk. And setting everything else aside, 15 always felt like way too low a percentage for that to be worth it. 15% is not even a quarter of one glass of wine. My roommate would just be shuffling around a crowded party wincing like, yeah, it stings a little, but Hey, it was either this or taking two more sips. <laughs>
One, one thing about living with my girlfriend is we have no more like personal space anymore. Like when I first moved in, she overheard me for the first time talking to my parents on the phone. And afterwards she was like, wow, you talk to your parents in such a formal way. Which I think is just what people who grew up in California say to you when you don't feel comfortable calling your mom a dumb bitch. <laughs> Her exact words were, she goes, you talk to your mom like you're on a job interview. It's like, yeah, I talk to her like I want her to like me. <laughs> also, I've heard my girlfriend talk to her mom on the phone. I talk to my mom like I'm on a job interview. She talks to her mom like she just got fired and is on her way out the door. <laughs> She's like, yeah, and here's another thing I never liked about you. I still expect a check in the mail. <laughs> 